Good day, everyone. Thank you for joining and welcome to this month's Connect with Control-M. My name is James Pendergrast and I'm a member of the BMC Customer Support Team. Today, we're going to talk about Managed File Transfer Enterprise, sometimes referred to as Managed File Transfer B2B. I'd also like to take the opportunity, opportunity to remind you that if you have any questions, please feel free to enter them in the Q&A panel. We will address them towards the end of the session. Finally, you can save this presentation by going to the File and Save option in your WebEx session. So let's start with the agenda. Today, we're going to talk about the architecture. Then we will show you how you can install and configure Manage File Transfer Enterprise. We'll finish up by showing you a real-world example of how you can use Manage File Transfer Enterprise in your environment. So let's start by taking a look at the architecture. As we look at the architecture, we can see that there are three different areas, the Control-M environment, the DMZ, and the world. Note that each of these three areas are isolated by security as indicated by the brick walls. The Control-M environment is your internal environment where all the job processing takes place. The new component introduced with Managed File Transfer Enterprise is the hub. The hub is the FTP server used by Managed File Transfer Enterprise to transfer files. The DMZ is where the new file exchange component, also referred to as the gateway, exists. External customers connect to this component through a web-based browser or standard FTP client. No files are stored on the file exchange component. They are all stored on the hub. The world represents external users who will be sending and receiving files. So let's move on to the demo where I'll show you how you can install and configure Managed File Transfer Enterprise in your environment. So we've already installed Enterprise Manager Update 001, which is required. We also installed the Managed File Transfer B2B installation in Enterprise Manager. These activate the MFT button and the Configuration Manager. In order to save time for the demo, we already installed these components. For more information on the installation process, please see the install guide. So that now, now that we have the prerequisites installed, we can start the installation of the file exchange component or gateway. Then we can add the users. If you remember the architecture mm -hmm. slides, this is the component that was in the DMZ in the orange box in the middle. So let's log into our file exchange machine and install the software. So I've already downloaded and extracted the, so the installation software. And we run setup.sh to install. So the first panel that we get is just a verification that we're not using a graphical environment. Answer yes to that. Uh, the next thing that we get is the license agreement. And we always want to review and accept the license agreement. So this panel has uh, the configuration on it. Hub host is the name of the agent where the hub will be installed. So we'll enter there. All right, and the second uh, item is the hub port 7443. We'll leave that one the same. The third item that we need to enter today is the authentication password. This is a password that we'll be using again later. Make sure that you save this off. All right, four, five, and six deal with security. You may need to set these up depending on your requirements. Managed File Transfer Enterprise supports key-based authentication and you use items four, five, and six to configure this. For the purposes of our demonstration today, we'll just use the defaults. So we'll hit enter to continue. Uh, next panel asks us to just verify everything. Everything's good, so we'll hit enter and continue. So 
shouldn't take but a minute or two for this to run. And while the installer is running, I wanted to mention a few things. I wanted to remind you that before you do this install, you need to install the Enterprise Manager Update 001 and also make sure that you saved off the password. We'll need it later. So we can watch the progress here. So what it's doing is putting the, the files on this machine that we'll need to start up the gateway and the file exchange component. And then once this is done, we'll need to go to the configuration manager and define this component over there. And as soon as this completes, I'll show you the file structure over here. Uh, not a whole lot to the file structure because we don't store files on this machine. We just have the software installed. All right, the installation has now completed. So let's go look at the directory structure. It's very similar to other Control-M products that are installed, and all of the software on this machine is installed in MFT-proxy, so let's CD into that directory. So the data directory under this is where all the security information is stored. The log directory is where the diagnostic and debug logs are stored, and the exe directory is where the executables are stored. So let's go into the exe directory, and we can see that we have start-mft-proxy.sh, which starts it, and shut-mft-proxy, which shuts it down. So let's start the processes up. All right, I would suggest putting the startup and shutdown into your machine configuration for when the machine restarts. So now that we have the install completed and running, we need to, need to configure the hub in the Control-M Configuration Manager. So let's go to the Configuration Manager and get that completed. Where the configuration is done is there's a new button. It's under Manage, MFT B2B, so we'll select that. And this is new, the new interface for Manage File Transfer Enterprise. And this is where all the management and configuration is done for Manage File Transfer Enterprise. So let's add a hub. Since we don't have anything defined, the first field is the agent name where the hub will be running. We'll leave that the same. Gateway authentication password. This is the password that we entered a few minutes ago when we set up the, uh, installed the gateway. We'll enter that in. The domain name. This is the name of the machine where we installed the software. All right, and the company name. So this is where we put our company name. So today we'll be Cuthbert Brothers and Acme provides products that we use and sell. And every week Acme sends a catalog to Cuthbert Brothers. Once we receive the catalog, the catalog is processed, and then a confirmation email is sent to Acme. So let's put our company name in here, and the contact at our company is Matthew. Now one thing to note, the company name and the contact information is what appears to the outside world, and it'll also appear on the splash screen when you log in, and if the customer has, uh, end user has any uh, problems or needs support, this is the information that, that he can send to. So let's create this. So it's now building the site. In the background, it's setting up communication between the hub and the gateway and enabling the managed file transfer enterprise. So now that we have the, the hub created, we need to add the users and the folders so that they'll have some place to log in and store information. So we'll select the users. And so we'll add our first user. So this is the user at Acme that will be uploading files to us. So we have the contact information for that, and it's Bob Smith at Acme. We'll enter his. We will assign him a password. Uh, my mistake. As you can see, you cannot use uh, special characters. And one thing I'd like to mention, you cannot use spaces either. So we had to do Bob underscore Smith. We will assign him a password. Uh, the next field is the SSH public key. This is where you'd enter the public key for SSH secure communications. We're not using that today, so we will leave that blank. Uh, email, we put Bob Smith's email in there. All right, phone number is optional. And the last field is company name. And Bob works for Acme, as we've said. 
All right, so we'll save this. So now that we have a user created, we need to create some space for the user. So we'll go to virtual folders. We'll add our first folder. So the virtual folder name, we need to give it, uh, give it a name. And once again, it can't have spaces, it can have underscores. So we'll relate it back to the company name. We'll call it Acme folder. Uh, the next two fields, the size limit and retention time. Size limit by default is 100 gig and retention time is 24 hours. These parameters can be changed. And this helps the product self-manage the size in the files. So once you reach 100 gig, it'll stop transfers. And once you reach 24 hours, it'll start deleting files older than that. And these parameters can be changed to fit your requirements. So authorize external users. Select that. So we need to add Bob to this folder so he'll have permission. So we simply type the first letter of his name and we'll get a drop down. The next field that I'd like to show you is the send the email notification to external users when a new file arrives. What this means is when it's selected from internal, if you transfer into the folder structure a file, it will send an email back to Bob Smith at his email address, which we entered earlier and let him know that a, a file has arrived that he needs to come pick up. So let's hit save. So we now have Managed File Transfer Enterprise installed and a user created and files can be transferred. So let's take a minute to look at a real world example. So external customers share information through the file exchange component. And I'll show you the web-based interface and we'll take a look at some jobs that process the information. So let's open up our web browser. So I will now be switch, switching to the role of Bob Smith from Acme. I'll be switching to his role so that I can show you the interface from his perspective. We open the file exchange interface and uh, the background's a little light, but you can see that the company name that we set in there, Cuthbert Brothers, is prominently displayed so that the users know where they're logging into. So let's log in as Bob. So once we log in, two things I'd like to show you real quick. On the upper left, it has our name, Cuthbert Brothers, so that you always know while you're logged in what, what you're logged into, the, the correct site. And on the upper right, it shows that we're logged in as Bob Smith. If you select the drop down arrow, one of the options on there is send email to admin. So if your external users have a problem or need to uh, send you email, get support, whatever, they have a, a method to do that. So as Bob from Acme, as we were discussing earlier, we need to transfer a file. So let's do that now. We'll go to upload file, select a file, we'll browse. And we'll select the file that we need to transfer, open. And as soon as the upload button, and we can do the upload. So this shouldn't take but just a moment to upload. So we're transferring the file into the file exchange and it's being put in the, on the hub as soon as we transfer it. So as soon as it's done, we can use the file. So now that our catalog is uploaded, we will take a look at a job stream to process this file. This is in the Enterprise Manager in the Monitoring Domain. Open up Enterprise Manager. And here's our job stream. And we can see by the times of the jobs that they just ran. The first job that we had was watching for the file to arrive. And as soon as the file arrived, we processed the file. And as soon as the file was processed, the next job is send completion. And this puts the uh, file that we processed back out into Bob's directory and sends him an email. Uh, one thing to mention, I've now left the role of Bob Smith and I'm now back in the role of Cuthbert Brothers. Uh, my apologies for not mentioning that earlier. So this is Cuthbert Brothers Enterprise Manager. All right, so now that the files are being shared and we're processing this information, the final step is how do we monitor and audit this activity? And the GUI has a tool Managed File Transfer that provides this information. I'll open that, Tools, Manage File Transfer. Uh, so the dashboard shows the current activities and transfers, and it can be customized. 
We can also search for the file that we just, uh, just sent. If we're wondering what happened to the file and did it arrive, you can put in just part of a file name and it will fill out and, and do a search on that. Uh, another useful feature is you can go back to the dashboard and you can select a machine and it'll show you the, all the files that have transferred on that machine. There are also two new reports in the reporting facility. The first one is a report that shows the transfer details. The second report shows the external user activities like logins and uploads. We move in back to the slides. So we installed and configured the file exchange component in the DMZ. Then we added an external user, Bob. As Bob, we uploaded a file using the web-based client, and that file was then processed by Control-M, and Bob was notified of its completion. Thank you for taking time out of your day to attend.